Hello Mayans and welcome back to my channel. If you're part of that 80% who haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the little notifications bell down below so you'll be notified when I upload new content. And as always, the links to my social media are down below as well. Today, I have a special treat for you. I'm here at Two Spirit, who are one of my sponsors, and I am here with a very special guest. Hi, I'm Chrisinda Wolf, a nurse practitioner here at Two Spirit. You cover the gamut of LGBTQ healthcare, mental health care. We're doing everything now. We're doing Beautiful You, and we have family services as well. And even the little kids can come yes. in a non-judgmental forum. 35 people in this office, all dedicated to your health. That's what we wanted to talk about today. I thought it might be useful if we covered everything you needed to know about medical transition, some of the pitfalls, in hopefully about 10 minutes. <laughs> We're being ambitious. Let's suppose I come in with my letter saying, hey, I am now approved for hormone therapy. What is the first thing you look for? I'm going to actually take an overall look at you, see how you are, there's the gender that you choose. And of course, we will go over a family history for you and a medical history. Am I working with a clean slate or am I working with some things that I might have to modify things for? Hypertension, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. If you have any health risks, do you take any other medications? If you have a history of blood clots in your family, are you a smoker? That's a big no-no. Come in, you get your vitals done, hormone replacement therapy can also affect your blood pressure and things like that. So once you've decided to start on hormone therapy, mm -hmm. frequently there's blood work involved in that, right? So Always. We get base labs on on everybody that comes yeah. in for HRT. Blood count, white blood cells, all of that. Yeah. Um, a comprehensive metabolic panel that's going to tell me about kidney function, liver function, that kind of thing. Probably get a baseline of whatever your testosterone or your estradiol levels are. Before you're talking a little bit about cardiovascular risks, yeah, I'm a family practitioner. I can get your blood pressure under control. I have other things that you can be on that won't affect your HRT, but will help your blood pressure and keep you in the safety zone. This is something you want to address as quickly as possible. If you put off the other aspects of your health while you're being concerned with your transition, it can impact your transition down the line. Sure. However you got your HRT medication, your hormone replacement, some yeah. people were buying it online. You're talking about self-medicating. They're self-medicating. Yeah. That's a bad idea. We don't want you to do that. And the reason for that is, is what if you are a hypertensive person taking now these things? you're putting your health at risk. Now you want to do surgical intervention. Well, guess what? A doctor's not going to touch you if you don't have a normal blood pressure. Great if you're having this great transformation. Really terrible if losing your teeth because you got diabetic and you're having all kinds of issues and yeah. you didn't take care of those little things that we could have addressed to make the whole transition a good transition. I want you to be the best you want to be and as far as you want to go, but it also has to be safe and healthy. Safety first. That includes making sure you're showing up for your appointments and you are taking the appropriate dosages. In order to get where you want to go, you're going to have to jump through these Big hurdles. Goals. This is actually puberty. It's puberty two for some of us. If you're very lucky, it's only puberty one. one. Puberty doesn't happen overnight for cisgender men and women. It's not going to happen overnight for you either. It is something that requires many years in terms of its sure. time frame. I've had patients that have been already, what, four, five plus years. I think I have a patient that's eight years right now into HRT therapy and I always ask what you expect. Let's just say testosterone. You can't literally ingest testosterone, testosterone like you could an estradiol. Yeah, I don't know. I, I know some women so. who would argue against that. <laughs> We start with bi-weekly injections and we just increase the dosage, but we do it over months. Normally I'm seeing you anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks for a good year. We want to make sure we get you into a particular level. So I have to find what I like to call the sweet spot. Someone can be on 0.5 every two weeks and that's great for them and that's what they stay on. But then there are other people who need 0.75 or they need an ML every week. Too and many people, like they come to their doctor and goes, how come I'm only My friends on this My and idea. I was like, well, your body's different. Testosterone increases your red blood cells. They wind up being too high, you're at risk for blood clots. We don't want that. It's also the long explanation of why I can't run as long and as far as I used to. Yes. <laughs> If you're giving yourself too much testosterone, you're gonna pay for it at some point. But don't come at me and tell me that you're out of testosterone. I know how to calculate, I'm just saying that. <laughs> don't do this. Naughty, naughty. Don't share your medications. You could kill yourself. It, pretty much. It's not just about levels all the time too. It could also be about the characteristics that you were seeking. Did you get a full beard? We wanna stop your cycles, for instance. We nip that in the bud. Trans kids, like how do you treat kids differently? Well, I definitely will probably start out a little low 
lower than I would do my older counterparts and it's because I want to try to avoid the highs and lows of the moods. Their results are a little bit quicker. Everything grows at a faster rate. Their metabolisms are faster. You want to be monitoring them very closely to make sure that their levels are right. Characteristics are easier to mold as they're just starting to form than they are when characteristics have already formed. Yeah, that's why starting young is so important. It is. We right. want to make sure that they are 100% sure that this is what they want to do. Presumably so. by the time they get to you, they've already done a lot of the mental health stuff, right? Thankfully, yes. Yeah. Let's get into a little bit about expectations. Every trans guy I know wants a beard. Every trans woman wants larger breasts. We really don't know what to expect. Is there anything that, you know, we can use as guidepost guide markers in terms of I our mean, transitions? We can, you definitely have to look at your family. If your dad is like hairy from here down and has this huge Papo Gijo type <laughs> beard, you probably can't expect that. Is it going to happen overnight? No, but it will happen. In your medical experience, yes. that's what you've seen. Oh, definitely. I've seen even in three months, of course, it's younger, some of the younger patients. Then you have the patients who are like, oh, I've been wanting to grow the beard and I just have a spotty beard. And then I ask, well, what's your dad? Well, my dad doesn't have a beard. That's why you don't have a beard. <laughs> right. And same goes for breast size, and I assume. breast too. I mean, if mom's carrying some double Ds, yeah, you're probably going to get some pretty large breasts. You may not need augmentation. Give it time. You really don't know what you're going to get yet. It's all dependent on your genetics. Be careful what you wish for. Oh my God, and I think I was going to get this much hair. Now oh, I yeah. need body waxing. Now I need body To go waxing. to the beach. <laughs> Unfortunately for older transitioners, sometimes it's hard enough to even get to the level I think of our siblings. I'm not gonna lie, the later in life that we start doing this, yeah, it's a little hard because those features are pretty much set in stone. The good news is, is that we have resources for doctors and everything like that that mm -hmm. can help you with masculinization features as, as well as feminization features. I've seen a lot of patients that want surgery and I look at them and I'm thinking to myself, why? It's okay. a self-esteem issue at yes. that point. Yes, at that time, at that moment it is a self-esteem issue. But if you remain positive and you put good vibes vibes out, usually positivity helps you get to where you want to be. Don't be like me. I'm always positive things are going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone through our transitions, at least as far as the hormone replacement therapy can take us, and we're ready for life-altering surgeries. For a trans guy, that is often top surgery, and for trans women, that's very frequently bottom surgery. Part of my job, too, is to make sure that I'm sending you to the right people to follow up for, for what you want done. Yeah. And I tell everybody, don't just go to the very first person that you see because they offer you a good price. You have to live with that. Don't go with discount tire warehouse okay. for your body. <laughs> You have to think, was it worth having the surgery and now I have urinary continence the rest of my life? You need to make sure that whoever you go to is literally an expert in what they do. Because the last thing you need in this life is to have nerves not re -innervate. Now you no longer can actually climax. You don't want that to be the one thing that they take away. It's a big thing for me. I definitely would do my research. Yeah. I definitely would have more than four or five different consults. Yeah. I would definitely research their work. I would probably try to find some of the patients that had these surgeries and ask them what their outcomes were. Do your research and make sure the person you've been to has done more than like six. Is there other things you look for? Male to female. You don't need Spiro anymore, which is a great thing. Yeah, that's and that's, that's a testosterone blocker. Right. I'm still gonna do breast exams on you now that you have breasts because that doesn't change. Mammograms starting at 40 years old. Vaginal health is still important. It is something we have to pay attention to. However you look at it, now it's an orifice. Okay, now top surgery for trans guys. Any special considerations they need? I don't believe they take the axillary nodes off when they actually take do the top surgery. Remember, breast tissue goes all the way up. If you have breast cancer in your family, cancer could happen. I don't know how many vaginas you've seen uh, post-op transgender women. You can tell quality differences, I guess is what I'm yeah, trying to say. you definitely can. It's one thing to hear about people's work. It's even better when you get to see what yeah. their work is like. You yeah. want it to look Like so, you were born with it. Like you were. that's what, how you were born. Want to get what you pay for and then some. Trans vagina feeding and care. Would you be willing to do that video with me sometime? Sure. All right. Any last thoughts you would like to leave any of our transgender patients with in terms of their medical transition? I just want them to know that it's really important to follow up. One thing that we do have here that I do notice is that there's a lot of reschedules, cancellations, things like that. And then you want your medication, but remember, in order to be safe, we do need your labs, okay? We don't want you having blood clots. We don't want you to have any kind of coronary issues. Understand if we deny a script, it's because you have 
haven't been here in six months. It's my job to make sure you're healthy. And don't buy it online. And don't buy it off the market. There can be very bad results. And that's the great thing about Two Spirit. You guys are my first sponsor. I do very much believe in them, which is why I come here for my own personal health and healthcare needs. We're expanding services. We can do well woman care. Laser and electrolysis as well. Yes, we do. And we just hired a new NP for, I think, the Botox and the fillers. So they can cover LGBTQ plus people as well as straight people. All inclusive. Thank you so much, Christinda. No, thank you. Love doing these videos. It's yeah, so cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any questions about your transition that you might have, please include them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And maybe I can forward any of them on to you if yeah, there's absolutely. any that I can't answer myself. As always, all my socials are down below. And if you have a dime to spare, don't forget I do have a Patreon and I'd very much appreciate your support. Don't forget to like this video by giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video. And please don't forget to subscribe. And see you around Nanowebs. <laughs>